So we're back on this truck again. Um, we went ahead and got approval to go ahead and repair these leaks. So we are going to be dropping the little pan and getting to the rear main seal. So that means we are yanking out this tranny. So I'm going to go ahead and go step by step how to remove the tranny and the oil pan all in one video. Um, make it a little bit easier for everybody. So what we're going to go ahead and start by doing, first and foremost, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get into there and I'm going to remove the torque converter bolts. We'll spin the engine by hand and yank them out from that hole one by one. That way that part is done. And then what we'll go ahead and do is remove the drive shaft. So we got two bolts on the center support. We got four back here. Got one, two, three, and four. And the drive shaft will actually just slip out. Once we have that out, we're gonna go ahead and remove the shift linkage and all the accessories that bolt to the tranny. And then we'll go ahead and take off this clamp. We'll go ahead and take off the two bolts, one bolt there, one bolt up there, where you at? Right there. Unplug the O2 sensor, take off this one, this one, take off this one, this one, this one, and this one will drop this and we'll drop the exhaust. By that time we should already have um, something supporting the tranny because obviously our tranny mount is bolted to here. And then we'll go ahead and angle the tranny back a little bit down. The back of it is going to come down a little bit so we can reach the top bell housing bolts and then we'll work our way around. And then that will allow us to pull the tranny out and then we can get to the rear main seal. <clears throat> While the tranny is out, we're going to go ahead. Ah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's go ahead and start by doing what I said and getting the stuff around the tranny and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get these torque converter bolts off. So I'll show you how to go and do that. <clears throat> I got a 15 millimeter, let's see if we can get it on camera, uh, swivel, short. I don't want a long one. Um, so we're going to use this one to get it off. That way we can kind of hit it at an angle. And then it's got my 3 8 electric Milwaukee. So we'll just get it in here like this. Make sure we're on it straight. You don't want to round these off at all. And then we'll go ahead and pull them out. Make sure we don't drop them. So there's one. We're going to go ahead and turn the crankshaft manually. So the other one comes up. It looks like something's hidden in there now. Nah, I guess that's just the design of it. Bring that one down. And yeah, that's why you would take this cover off to get them out if they fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the camera and then we'll take the rest off. Okay, all right, so we got them all off. Now you'll know this when you hear this sound. It's a good indicator that they're not both together anymore. And there's our first one. And as you can see, we're gonna go ahead and take it off. I'm gonna go ahead and take off these as well so I can get that last bolt out, the last nut out. And then we'll start removing the drive shaft. So we're gonna go ahead and get these four bolts off. These are 12 point. So you're going to want to go ahead and use a 12 point. I'm using a short extension and my half inch. You're going to want to go ahead and put it in neutral so you can spin these bolts around or spin the drive shaft around to get these bolts a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and take these out. We'll go ahead and get the center support out. So I did have to remove the four front flange bolts as well at the tranny just to get it out. So we're gonna go ahead and 
I put this bolt back in, in the center so I can go ahead and work on the front there. So we're going to go ahead and take this one out. Hopefully it doesn't fall on my face. And then we're going to go ahead and drop this and get that out. So we got four flange bolts in the front, four in the back, two on the center support. One you can leave in because it'll slide out and then that's it. So let's go ahead and start working on taking everything off the casing of the tranny and then we'll start taking the rest of the stuff off. So I got everything disconnected from the transmission. I have the cooler lines off. I have the exhaust all loosened up, ready to be taken off. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the cross member. I have the transmission supported for right now. I'm going to pull off these three bolts right here. That way I can drop the, trans the exhaust because the hangers are right here. This one I'm pretty sure I can just unbolt this and it'll fall off. This one doesn't look like it's going to be the same. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and take this off, drop the cross member, and drop the exhaust. And then we'll start taking off the bell housing bolts. And then we'll go ahead and yank this transmission right out. We'll go ahead and replace the rear main seal. And then while the tranny is out, we're also going to disconnect and remove the oil pan. So that way it'll make it a little bit easier to kind of slide it out. And then we'll put the oil pan in and then reverse process everything back in. So I'm going to go ahead and just speed this section up so you're not having to watch me do it. So just enjoy the music and I'll come back once I need to speak again. So we have everything clear. I repositioned the tranny jack um, just to make it a little bit more easier for me to get out and more stable. I got some wood under here. I have it ratchet strapped down to the actual jack itself um, to kind of keep it stable. So we're gonna go ahead and use this to go ahead and get all the bell housing bolts out. And then we have it kind of tilted at a very sharp angle just to kind of make it easier to get to these top bolts. So I'm going to speed this portion up so you're not watching me, you know, fiddle around with it for a while.
as you can see, the problem with this jack is it doesn't go high enough. Um, so that's a little bit of my problem, is I had to get a little bit higher. So I just went ahead and lifted up, put a couple pieces of extra wood in there, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and get this off out off camera because um, I might have to lift the car down a little bit or lower the car a little bit. So that's part of the issue is because I still have a bolt up on top. I didn't want to come out because it was hitting the fiberglass uh, heat shield right here. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition everything. And then uh, once I know for sure I can get it out, I'll bring it back on camera. So looks like that's really all I needed was to get these pieces of wood in there and kind of get it a little bit higher. And that was actually it. So now I am able to bring it back a little bit. So now all I have to do is clear. Let's see. I got that out. Okay. Looks like all I have to do now is just pull back and go from there. Already going to take off the flywheel. Uh, here, maybe. So, we're going to go ahead and get the flywheel off, and then we're going to actually check the rear main seal, see how it looks. So the goal to getting this oil pan out is to not have to take a whole bunch of stuff off just to get it out. So it doesn't look like I have to drop the steering rack. It looks like I can just snag it out how it sits right there. Set my way real quick. To the side. Okay. So it looks like I can just drain the oil yank out all the bolts and kind of since I have a tranny out just kind of snag it out that way I can use a quarter inch with the short socket to get the front bolts out and then a swivel to get the side ones out and then just straight up right here and I think it'll come right out and then they're gonna order me a complete plate uh, with the rear main seal already attached um, because they usually have a sleeve um, on the rear main seal itself kind of to ease it going in a lot better but we'll see when it comes in um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these bolts out off camera uh, with the exception of probably these rear two that way you can watch me actually pull it out um, yeah because I don't want need you to be sitting there watching me you know fight to get these bolts out because I do gotta peek my head up the front to get to the front ones so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all the bolts with the exception of the two rear and then you can watch how I kind of get it out. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can get to this. So what I did was I came in through here and I'm right here and there are four bolts right here in the front. I just used a 10 and a 13 millimeter wrench to pull them out. Um, Obviously, if you're doing this at home on jack stands, uh, you're going to go about it a little bit different. But since I am not, I am doing it this way. So if you're doing it at home, let's take a look at it from the back. Yeah. So if you're doing this from home and you had the transmission still in place, you're going to definitely want to remove this cross member. And you may have to disconnect the steering linkage um, or the, the rack and pinion. I don't think you do. I think you can still get it past the oil pickup tube with that in place. Now the one thing Ford did 
which is pretty good, I suppose, is there's no bolts that are behind here. So if you look at it, I have those four bolts in the front. Okay, uh, kind of hard to see. And this is the next one in line, which is easy to get to. Same with on this side. The next one that I'm going to be able to get to is right there, and that's it. So they don't have any bolts right here, so you probably can leave it in. I think if you drop this cross member, you can angle it down far enough and pull it right out, and then same thing with getting it back in. Um, so I'm telling you, you know, if you do have a tranny out, if you did want to replace this gasket as well, and you pull the tranny out first, don't have to remove the cross member at all. You're going to want to go ahead and get to the front. Um, you can potentially, possibly get them from the top. Um, and just reach your hands down there and get them off of the wrench. I'm not entirely sure. I just stuck my head up there and did it that way. So I just figured I'd pop in and explain to you how I got to those four front bolts. And then we're going to take off the rest, like I said. Leave the two back kind of snugged up. And then we'll come back once I'm ready to pull the actual oil pan out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these last two out. One and two. And then we're going to just kind of pry on it a little bit right here and go ahead and get this thing out. Let's see if I can grab it somewhere. Right here, maybe. No. Oh my god, that gasket is like rock hard. I can already feel it. Okay, well. Let's get my... This is kind of why I'll do certain things off camera, just because... It may not go how I want it to go right away, and it might have to change up how I want to get it out. So, yeah, that's kind of why. And I also like to listen to music, which is attached to my phone. And my earpiece, which is the same spot the microphone is attached to. So, yeah, that's also why. Okay, so let's get this off. Oh yeah, they did. Well, I guess I didn't. Okay. Now, as long as there's nothing in the front, which it looks like there is, so we might actually just have to pull that off. I don't see a way I can see. Oh damn it, yeah, that pickup tube is, is gonna be a pain. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We'll go ahead and pull these off. Alright. So I didn't got this lowered out of my way. I got the oil pan all cleaned up. We're going to take out the rear plate. So I already have the crank sensor moved and out of the way. So it should just be a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. Your plate, actually, it's just nope, there's a gasket. Wow, I guess it's tore up. Huh. Okay, that looks like it's just silicone. That's weird because it does have the
it does have the cutout. I don't know if you can see it. It does have this little slot for the gasket, but looks like it's just silicone, I guess. Well, let's see what they bring me. Hopefully, they're, they're probably going to bring me the whole thing. Uh, we'll see. So, as of right now, I'm kind of... I'm not necessarily set. I could put the whole pen in and just... Um, hand tighten the bolts, just a couple threads. Um, but it is lunchtime, or close to lunchtime, so I'm going to take a break. Uh, come back and hopefully... Hopefully we have parts. And we can throw this thing back together and knock off the calipers because we do have the caliper on the left side that's sticking. Um, brakes, brake flush. And uh, all I'm going to do on camera for this video is just tranny and old pan. I'm not going to do the rest of the stuff. That's kind of straightforward. Uh, maybe in another video on another car. Um, but for this one, we're just going to knock out these two and that's it. So, yeah. I'll, uh, once I get my parts, we'll go ahead and come back, flip the camera back on, and we'll throw this thing back together all right so i got the rear plate and the rear main seal put on the outer half is just silicone i did verify that with mitchell or all data so there's a specific way that they have you put silicone on i do use black rtv silicone so basically you put it on and then you go ahead and torque everything down the torque specs is 89 inch pounds and then an additional 45 degrees and then you go ahead and button that up you know clean off some of the parts that come out now i'm going to go ahead and put the crank sensor back on and i'm going to put the oil pan back on oil pan i will do off camera and then once the oil pan is snugged up we'll come back on camera we'll put the flywheel back on or the flux plate back on the We'll put the spacer, put the flux fit back on, the ring back on, and then we should be ready to put the tranny back in. And the tranny I will probably do on camera, I'm not entirely sure um, just yet. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. And then we're gonna, I'm going to change up how I do the exhaust part too. So I'm going to use the tranny jack to get it up in place, and then I'll put the, um, the stand on, the scissor stand. And then that I can use to go up and down. So I can put the exhaust in and that'll actually give me room around the tranny to fit the exhaust back in place. Because it was a little bit tight with the tranny jack that I was using. So I'm probably not going to use that when I put the exhaust back up. Um, that way I can actually get my hands around everything also to feed the harness back around as well. So yeah. So let me just go ahead and, and place the oil pan back in. Let me get that torqued down. So when you're working on gaskets, yes, you do want to torque from the specs. Um, like I said, this one was 89 inch pounds of torque. There was a specific sequence. And then you do an additional, in the same sequence, 45 degrees. Um, I will pull the specs up for the oil pan. Uh, this is more so when you're dealing with silicone. Because if you just ugga dugga it and, and tighten it all the way down, uh, the silicone can basically work its way back out. And you're basically going to leave a little bit in there to try and stop any kind of oil to go through. So just put it to where they say, you know, if it's inch pounds, foot pounds, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you torque it to what they specify when you're dealing with the gasket, more so with silicone. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and put that in off camera and then we'll come back once I have the oil pan in. We'll put all this stuff back in and get the starter situated to where I want it to be. And then we'll go back and grab the tranny jack because somebody snagged it from me and then I will go ahead and put the tranny back in um, like I said not sure if I want to do it on camera or not um, it's really nothing special about it it's just basically wiggle it around um, until actually there's one thing I want to add and I'll add it once I have the tranny back on the stand so we got the flex plate in everything bolted up um, so we're going to go ahead and get the tranny in, contemplating whether I want to do it on camera or not. I'm not entirely sure, even though regardless, it's going to be sped up regardless. Um, eh, let's just go for it. If it gets to be too much of a pain in the ass, um, just for the overall length of the video, I might just stop it and cut that part out. 
So here you go. Oh, so the part that I wanted to add is when you are pulling it out, the torque converter can have a tendency to come out a little bit. So you want to just make sure, see if you heard that, it came out a little bit, wiggle it a little bit, and push it back in. Make sure it goes into all the splines. Um, and then obviously try and uh, aim it to where it'll be straight up and down with that. It should be fine. Um, but yeah, just make sure it's in because I have seen guys put them in to where it's out just a little bit. And they go and force the, the bell housing on. It'll be out like a gap. And they'll just gun them in thinking it's just, you know, maybe the um, the, the spacers, and the guide pins. Um, and they torque them down. And what happens is it pushes up against the oil pump. And it causes to where they go and try and spin the engine to lock up. So, just keep an eye on that. Okay, back to the action. installed i haven't attached the shift linkage yet um, but i got everything else done i haven't bolted these two down yet but i will in a minute and i have to tighten this one as well for the exhaust um <clears throat> but for the most part um everything is in i need to put these two bottom bolts in these nuts on these two bottom bolts or studs whatever you want to call them um starter is in place and as far as the tranny goes i mean that's that's it, really. Uh, torque converter bolts will knock them out last. All right, so the car is running. Uh, it's been running for a few minutes, uh, maybe about going on a minute now. I haven't seen the drips, so we're good there. Um, I don't see any leaks. I did see the coolant leak from right there, but that's probably because of the angle that we had the engine at. So it's probably tweaking the, the hose a little bit. Um, I'm not going to worry about that too much. We'll, we'll see how it runs um, this hose right here. So, I mean, not much I can really do in that sense. It leaks, it leaks, and we're off to replace it. It's not that hard to replace. We'll just probably put it as a customer sat. But, um, yeah. So it wasn't that bad. Again, that's 
Here, let me see, let me see how many hours that took. That is eight hours for the tranny and the rear main seal. Oil pan gasket, additional three hours. So it's about 11 and a half hours. And we got it done in a day. Um, with some time to spare, what time is it? Yeah, we got about an hour to spare. Yeah, about 45 minutes to spare. So I can actually um, start knocking off the calipers and uh, ah, I probably won't start that today. I'll probably knock out the calipers tomorrow. Um, I do have this caliper to replace just because this caliper over here is sticking. So the pads are like almost gone where the other sides are brand new. So this car is ready to go. Um, you just need to do the brake portion of it. And as far as the oil leaks go, barring if this coolant line leaks, we should be good to go. Uh, I don't see that thing leaking anymore. Um, I put silicone where it should be, torqued everything down the spec. And you know, uh, I'll update if I do see a leak from somewhere else and we'll pop back in. But if not, uh, this is the end of the video.